this is legally, from a race standpoint, still an RX-7. Well, this is how it starts. A man and his drivetrain. We are going to put this as far back as we can. And that creates a lot of challenges, but it solves so many problems in the front of the car. When you install the three rotor with this subframe, the steering rack sits about right under here. So you can see where my logic is. Push the engine backwards until the steering rack sits in front of this. Why is that so important? Well, the steering rack currently sits too low. The company that makes this is actually kind of cool, but it shifts this linkage up here. You also have the same thing going on down here. If the steering rack was able to move up, you would eliminate a lot of this mechanical leverage. All of that comes down to the jungle gym right here that I'm holding on. This bar is now in the way. And it is a very, 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 very important bar. It is holding the suspension, lower control arms, in place. We have a bigger engine and we have a lot more force. All of this means we need to move the engine back, cut shit to get out of the way, but then also make it stronger than it was before. This is exactly two feet from the front of this new cover and the front of the front of the new cover to the bell housing. This engine, as you see it right here, is 260 pounds. And then this is 140 pounds. We can add the way the turbo, the manifold, the intake manifold, the coils. We're talking about 500 pounds. Moving that back five, six inches is a very, very big deal. Two feet exactly from there, the very back of the engine would be right here, which means we'd be cutting the shit out of this area. The other thing that we're talking about, if there's nothing underneath here, we drop this whole thing four inches as well. super light. When you see both of us with notepads, you know something really stupid is about to happen. What you see here is 400 pounds of raw drivetrain shifted currently at least six inches back and three inches down. Isaiah's got a lot of work out cut in front of him. Subframe stuff, steering rack stuff, engine mounts, that's all got to be done before we even talk about what wild shit that we can do because look at how far back that is now. All I know is that these are the suspension points. So these are where the arms went. So I want to lock these in so that way I could cut this middle piece out. So I'm going to be tacking this plate, which goes along this frame mill. So that actually gives it a good amount of strength. And then I could rebox it and remake it stronger. The center of these is actually at a two and a half degree angle outwards from the chassis. This is locked in up here. These points are locked in. These points are locked in and tightened. This is straight. Um, I know this is at the right degree. And so I'm going to chop this guy off so that way I can put this on the table and build it up from there. been working on getting this bracket tree done. It is a pain in the ass just because the angles are offset. Nothing's kind of square. I bet my first bracket. I'm feeling good because uh, I was getting kind of nervous about this. I'm gonna clean this up, tack this in, left these holes so that way when I weld it and tack it in I can put it back in here. Cut around more so that way it could go in. That looks a lot better. With all of this insanity, I need to get a haircut. And if anything, almost not thanks to Keeps for having the problem that my hair is constantly growing so well that I have to get a haircut too frequently. My biggest focus on that was actually preventing the male pattern hair loss that my entire family is plagued with. On my mom's side, my dad's side, everybody had the top thinning and the crowns going up like this. And sure enough, when I was about 30, that was starting to show my ugly head. Two out of every three men experience that form of male pattern hair loss by the time of 35 and I was kind of beating that statistic. So I looked to keeps to prevent 
the inevitable. And sure enough, it has done an amazing job. Everything that you're looking for about what you can do with prevention and helping regrow hair that you have lost is all on their website. It's no longer this mythical, weird quest. You can do a lot to prevent hair loss. Right now, Keeps has a special offer. If you go to keeps.com slash robdom, that's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash Rob Dom. I've been gone for the last two weeks filming Top Gear episodes. I come back to, my car stripped out. <laughs> this is the dream for me at this phase. This looks nothing like a Pikes Peak car yet. Just start from the ground up. And why? I want the lightest car possible. I want the strongest car possible. And I want this thing just shy of a race car. This is a longer engine and it is now further back. The car's gonna handle completely different and going down as far as it can because we no longer have oil under it. This whole thing has a lower center of mass. You can kind of look around the shop and see what these guys have started doing is cutting sections of the firewall out. We've got suspension pieces everywhere. We've got the rear diffuser for the four rotor over here. We have the automatic bell housing that flips the starter to the front and allows you to have more room for my foot. We're gonna get rid of the stock FD steering rack, not good enough. So we're gonna have a replaceable steering rack that is from the four rotor. It turns a little bit quicker, but it also is capable of being replaced very quickly. We put out a post because of my beautiful welding skills and this being a New Jersey car, the area underneath me has long been a hole. So we're gonna cut all that out at some point, replace it with this one right here. Somebody in Vegas had the answer to our prayers. It gives me a chance to right some of the wrongs with how we used to have the shifter too far forward. We haven't even removed the rear subframe. We're gonna remove that, remove a lot of the sound deadening, even the rear fenders off, know what everything weighs, and get it ready for the full roll cage. This is the first moment where I have to say goodbye to the sunroof. Well, I guess it's already goodbye. <laughs> there was a carbon skin that kind of went over this whole area. I finally met a point where I could utilize it. We'll be adding a lot of weight because of the whole tubing system going up here. Take as much weight back out. For the first time in my life, chance to do a race car with like a full livery. Get this damn thing built. ASAP so I can get some serious seat time behind it. the RX-7, it sits in the car on an angle. It actually has to do with how the car adjusts caster. Top parts are at different heights. The yeah. frame rail itself goes up. The arm naturally sits outward. We can make them in a line, but they're not straight with the car. These things end up being an uh, inch and a quarter different from what was here versus what's on the actual car. A couple concerns I have. The subframe naturally has slop. You could miss a line very easily. The other issue is we need to be able to adjust these points. All it's doing is letting you have the bolt go in or out and that moves this point. I actually want Isaiah to explain what glue he's sniffing because it looks right. like you're building caught guns. It does. <laughs> this between the lower control arms is a straight line. I jigged that with these V blocks and then I was able to get these mounting points by twisting it this way off of this little jig. This is the piece. I could drill out this hole and it'll fit through here. Oh, feels good, man. This is one of the most iconic intake manifolds, I think, in the world. This isn't getting much modification. Here's my problem right now. It sits too high. Look at how much space is under there. We're about to lop it off right here, keep this flange, take about an inch down, weld the flange back on. That was kind of a popular option a couple years ago when people were putting the engine in the stock location because this would not clear the hood. We could probably buy one but it wouldn't be semi-P. So we are going to cut this just inside of each of these kind of scribed lines. It looks like there's a mistake or something because this hole, this hole, and the one by my thumb, all three look about the same size where this one and these two clearly taper in. And those are actually the primary injectors. They really get more narrow for air velocity. We are going to go to the manual mill and loft this off as flat and perpendicular to this as possible. Doing good shit after bad. We're gonna go ahead and climb mill slowly, but manually all the way down. If we wanted to, we could build a jig, put it upright and do all that shit, but we'll just go slow and have this nice tall tool do the work.
this table has some slop from years of use from before me. Because the climb milling is basically pulling the table this way, you can actually see the slop occur and it kicks it this way. It wasn't just, oh, it's vibrating because there's tons of metal. It literally was the table shifting. Now we do kind of same thing to the other piece. One down, five to go. This is our lower intake manifold for the three rotor and it is truly the lower intake manifold. Not only modified an inch and a half down, but it's also with the semi-P from before. It kicks ass. So here's the real moment of truth. That's exactly what I asked for. This is more motorsports shit and I love it. What we did with cutting this off worked. The engine has to go up just a little bit more. We're about to re-disassemble all of this, but I wanted to get a first understanding of how much space we have moving forward because I'm shoving every bit of a cooler in here. Engine mount is just set right there. That one's steel because this side gets really hot. So we're gonna have to remake the turbo manifold for sure. On this side, things totally change because the starter is now coming this way. And that's what these engine mounts for the 20B were originally designed for, for an automatic transmission bell housing, way more room, and the starter is no longer sitting underneath there. Putting a whole three rotor back like this is no easy task because everything changes. Proof that we are truly committed to undoing all the shit we did to the car. All the stuff that originally was notched for the big massive turbo that used to be on here is being reinforced and put back to almost neutral. Now it is a little off and I'm okay with that because it's 100% functional. Weld this back in place, grind it, and pretend like it never happened. That height, to that height, is the same on both sides. It's, it's a car, it's a square. The subframe that this car has been driving on for all these years is not square on both sides. So when you measure the height of this, and we're just doing it kind of roughly just to show you guys, and then do it on the other side. Quarter of an inch. The original subframe was built with error. What that means for making this other side symmetrical to what I have right now is I have to go up and I have to grind all this area out to match the other side. I needed to have all those measurements to even jig this side up properly. This nut is now welded on there in exact same spot as the other side was. All the measurements line up. So now I could properly jig this. torpedo tube things are all welded up. I need to cut the outside pieces to be able to put the bushings and lower control arm into there. Right now I'm mainly focused on getting the actual subframe built with the engine and the steering rack in there because on Thursday someone's gonna come over and we're gonna get the car scanned and I want to have all that in there. But I mainly wanted to talk about was these were little subframe studs that were on there before. With this being such a tight spot, if I had this long guy in there, I can't even do anything like that. One of the hardest part about building race cars is people have things that are close to what you need, but not exactly what you need. We have these studs, but they were just straight thread. So I ended up just putting a small little weld on there to make it my own stud. And so now it stopped right there, right? And if I measure, it is three quarters of an inch out, which is exactly what I need. We are going to weigh just this much of the vehicle and see how much we're working with at the base. We're all gonna take a guess, 650 pounds. Okay. 
1150 LBS. Thousand pounds? You're going 940. 998. <laughs> I hate he the cuckolds people. himself. <laughs> he only has two pounds to be right. Yeah. Wow. Now, if you guys have noticed, I had a little ace up my sleeve. It's still attached to here. I hate you. Oh shit! <laughs> That's why I said I hate <laughs> Oh wait, wait, wait. One of them's not on. What? This? No, it's right here. It's on. The green one. Yeah, the green one. Now it's showing all the weights on those two, so you can just teeter-totter it this way. Yeah, you see that? Yep. We will chalk that up right now to the, the jacks, but that's actually a sign of what we need to do is we're gonna build a little frame rail system under the car to make sure that all four corners pick up points are square. So where'd you get the 650 number from? Did somebody yeah. tell you? Or? Nah, the, the, I, I know. I wanted it to be that number. I willed it. Regardless of what power steering or steering rack we change to, I knew that the alternator would be in the way of the power steering or the steering line. This should be pointing generally to the steering column, and it can't. So a blessing and a curse, we move the steering rack up to get rid of bump steer, now we can't run an alternator. So not only do we have this whole steering column, but we also have three massive AN lines coming out of the front there. So this is why I wanted this built here instead of up there. choice of weight reduction has been really weird. I'm starting to question his, he wanted to take that off and look at, he's like, you don't need all of your power steering. Pump. No, so that happened when I had the engine up, I took this off and it decided to fall. It was weird. I appreciate you trying to make it lighter though. So why is he cutting off a random nub on that transmission? Well, we don't want to cut any more of the existing chassis. We're going to bring it back down, get this line right here at or behind the cut line right here. One of the first moments where you get to see the engine potentially in its final position. Okay, I'm gonna stop there. I'm gonna move the engine back about an inch. So you can see that the engine and my foot are a little bit of a concern until you realize it really isn't. Thankfully, the guys did a good job at leaving these stock mounts. This engine's gonna come back another inch before we plate that whole thing in and Maybe we'll have a little baby plate here that we can remove to access things. This is stock. These are very thin. They're never gonna break off, or are they? I've heard rumor, but I've never seen anybody ripping these off, and I also don't wanna test 30-year-old welds. We added a little bit of reinforcement down here where it won't hit. It really encapsulates 360 degrees of the bushing, and like I said, it doesn't get in the way of it articulating. So all four of those will have that because we're still using these stock mounts. That actually keeps us in a lot of classes, just like with grid life. Funny enough, Pike's Peak lets you move these up to an inch, but I guess like if I would know where to move them. Pancake ass. It's a problem <laughs> that RX-7 normally doesn't have because it's very bulbous. It's a delicious butt on this car until you take off its BBL. There's the frame rail. Now that actually ends up going all the way along here. It's a big rectangle tube. We're actually gonna bust out Miller's uh, plasma cutter and cut about an inch away from that. The reason why is that the new fuel cell is rectangular. That brick requires us to get into this area for the new fuel cell. Here's what the old one looked like. This is not a fuel cell, that's a fuel tank. And the biggest difference between that is that, not much honestly, other than the fact that a fuel cell has like a bladder inside of it. Ours is gonna be slightly smaller. I, I think this is what, 20 gallons? We're gonna go for 18 gallons of fuel. Let's make some room for it. I feel like Cyclops from X-Men. Fire. It's the rubber okay. underneath. That is way more structural than I thought right there. Oh. <laughs> it's too strong. Look, okay, there we go. Look at that. It's three layers deep. 
It's that simple. Instead of fucking around with the whole transmission, I wanted to make sure that we get the engine where it needs to be relative to the steering rack. That actually dictates everything else. The pedestal is hitting the... Oh. At least that's the one thing I can see. And it's hitting like the back. That's where I need it to be. We're gonna cut the tunnel an inch back. There we go. That's it. That's crazy looking. The steering rack is like perfect. That's way further back than it used to be. The guys at Creoform have been a huge part of my journey from the very beginning of the four rotor. I actually took that car to Creoform's office in Costa Mesa and we scan they scanned the car for me and that's what helped me begin cutting it up. But Kevin from Creoform came out and is doing a little bit of a, a favor for me. And so the Peel 3D that I'd used years ago is something more for like us, but he brought out the big guns to scan this because we need to fit a radiator that literally will be touching the bumper and the flat bottom. We have very little room for error. This is still a little overkill for that. He's gonna scan this and we're gonna get some really great data on mounting everything in the front as we go to cut that off. We're juggling so many things to make the proper brackets, we need this 3D scan. Literally, it's done. Jesus. Yeah, that's super That's incredible because both the headlights let us align the body scan yeah. to understanding yeah. where all that is. I kind of wrote Kevin to doing more. <laughs> Thank you very much. Our radiator was going to fit somewhere like this. I know that we're probably going to have to lop some of this off. We have the intercooler sitting right here. We have the oil cooler and other secondary radiators sitting here. Ethan's actually gonna make a duct from that to the coolers in CAD and then 3D print it. This thing is gonna hit and push through the front of the car. If we go too far forward and if you go too far back, it's gonna hit the flat bottom with the headlight scan from the other one and this, we are unstoppable. I've made quite a few mistakes in my life and five of the worst ones are kind of all in this area. That's the very first plate of steel I ever welded. Surprisingly, it held up much better than not having that in there. I did not realize how structural this stuff is, not just for your seat, but actually carrying the front frame rail. Thankfully, we have somebody who gave us one of their leftover parts of an RX-7 from Vegas. And we're gonna cut out all of the rust and do it right. It's gonna rigidize <laughs> the chassis. Ryan went out and got 4.4 pounds of the good stuff. So the idea is that you're essentially trying to transfer that temperature to the plastic stuff here. You see the orange? That's what I was worried about. There's tons of rust in more than just the areas we could see. Ooh, that's gratifying. This is my side, and this is Ryan's side. Mine's a lot dirtier. In my defense, there's a lot more weird rust, and we know that we're gonna cut out the majority of this here. Good or bad, it is about time to finally cut out this section of cancer in this car. And so Ryan put a quick mark of ultimately trying to find the cleanest areas to cut. And as much as we wanna use the plasma cutter, it just doesn't seem like the right move for right now.
<laughs> it's actually kind of impressive. But you can see how many layers of steel are inside of the stock Mazda frame rail. That was a disaster waiting to happen. And thankfully, this is done. Added about a half to a quarter of an inch of extra around the new piece. So that way, once we get it in the car, we can see where we actually could go up or more or less, and then you can actually trace it while it's directly in there. It didn't even happen. That's right, it came from a Montego Blue car too. So anybody wondering why we're not just making our own new floor? Let me show you this. Sardine can. If we put another piece of metal in there, what are we gonna instinctively do? Go thicker. And that is the dumbest thing to do because that is not necessary. It's all about triangulation, making it squared, quads, all that sort of stuff really brings the strength into the piece. It weighs almost nothing, but it's not gonna bend. the third revision of this tube to mount for the sway bar and mount the steering rack. It's a little, it's a little frustrating, but I wanted to share this with you guys because it is a very important learning curve. Ethan's a very smart person and he's really good with the CAD and the computer and whatnot, but there is a huge difference between, you know, IRL and CADing. and have whatever, two tubes over here that I bent based off of his CAD. I bent them based off of what was there, right? And they came out right and we, okay, that one didn't work. And so I thought where I clamped the bend and then bent it was reversed and maybe I messed up. So I ended up redoing it a different way, clamping them both the same way and bending outwards because it's a symmetrical piece. They still didn't come out right. I ended up going back into uh, his CAD drawing and realizing that his center line radius of how he built the tube was off, causing real life measurements to be way off and not line up to what we need. And this piece is going in between the two frame rails. I want the tube to be you know, strong and fit well so that way it reinforces these two frame rails. Be careful when you're doing tubing and stuff because this is a six inch center line radius on this. But now we're here with this thing. I just wanted to show you guys how perfect this fits because I gotta like tap it into place. Clean the bottom of the chassis where this mounts and I just kind of got a new fresh layer of material and then so I'm going to be welding this up in here so I don't want all this to end up rusting out so good old zinc weld has been doing us justice. Throwing this guy in here. You gotta do it like the hookah lounge. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I can make a little ocean out of that one. <laughs> oh, that was sick. <laughs> that wasn't as cool. <laughs> oh, feed on all that is in there. That's, that's good. Good old oil. We're having a little bit of a debate on what's the easiest way to cut this off. I doubt my skills. You stay true to your roots. <laughs> you stay true to your roots. All right, so you get started on this. We'll come back tomorrow morning and see where you I are. I still don't think it'll be done. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Why?
we're gonna be going through them like that though. That's kind of what I'm trying to imply. I wanna get the whole front off so that way we can prep this area, prep that area. It's your last chance to not do this. <laughs> Don't put that in my head. I got to. It shows you just how structural that is. I was betting on that. We're gonna bring the car down to finish what we started, but can't go back now. Whoa. I don't know why I wasn't expecting it at that, the right time. Back now. A lot more room for activities, dude. So that, that, that's all I can say is, you know, imagine the radiator you could put in here now. You can kind of see some of the problems, and this is what we're all working together as a team trying a new thing, is we have to get the structural rigidity around here without hitting the headlight, without hitting the wheel. We also have to get this around the headlight and wheel. But then we also have intercooler pipe coming through here. And then we also have the air vent for the side radiator side oil coolers also has to vent up here or back here one way or another so we have a lot passing through this area which is why isaiah originally suggested cutting this at an angle a it'll aesthetically look good because the tube's gonna come up but b it'll give us just a little bit more room if we need to get a three inch you know three and a half inch intercooler pipe whatever we got a lot going through right in this area this is legally from a race standpoint still an RX-7. We could take even more off of it, but what you see behind me is under 600 pounds at this phase. And we've cut everything out that was bad, the darkest of the night before the dawn, but this is what makes this build so much different than it ever has been before. This is gonna be one hell of a car.